Good evening. We are so happy you were joining us for Good News on Entertainment tonight. I'm your host, Carly Boyette. In just a moment, we are highlighting a new film that shares a beautiful story about the power of prayer. And then later, we are highlighting a nonprofit and crowdfunded organization that produces free Bible videos, podcasts, blogs, classes, and educational resources to help make sure the biblical story is accessible to everyone everywhere. But first, The Miracle at Manchester. It's available on Pure Flix for six months beginning March 31st. It's the true story of how a teenager all-star athlete beat brain cancer through the power of prayer. Before we meet this young man and his father, take a look at the movie. I can't miss practice. I won't be allowed to play. We got the state champs in, what, like two weeks? Okay, aren't you excited? Oh, you mean excited for the biggest baseball game of my entire <laughs> yeah. life? I heard he passed out at practice. He pretty much spent the whole night in the ER. I got a kid who was here earlier. Okay. Dad's over concerned. I know my son, okay? And, and there's definitely something wrong with him. You're a healthy kid. He'll be fine. He said he passed out at school. I do think you need to prepare yourself. He's in cancer. This is serious. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove I'm all right. I, I just want them to get it out. But I'm asking you to please. Please be with my son. Yeah? Yeah, bud. Am I gonna die? Prayed for a miracle. I might only have one match. That's what we need to do. But I can make an explosion. By trusting God. Would you trust in God? Like a miracle. There's no such thing as miracles, honey. Listen, the kingdom of God is never meant to be a spectator sport. The only way you win a game is by actually getting on the field and fighting. And this is our field of faith. This is our moment to believe that what we read is actually real, that his word is more real than what we feel. Love you, Dad. Richard and Bryce join me now. Uh, oh, I'm so excited to get a chance to, to really sit down and speak with you guys. Uh, I mentioned before we got started, I, I watched the movie today. I'm surprised I'm not uh, all red-eyed and all swollen because it was so powerful in so many different ways. I just, it's a, it's a hard film and a hard story to watch. I can't imagine living it like you guys did and are still living through it, right? But um, what an amazing way to share your story and encourage others. So Bryce, I first want to start with you. How are you feeling today, by the way? How is your health right now? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, yeah, so in July, it will be the seventh month or seven year, um, I guess, anniversary of uh, me being healed. So, Wow. Amen. God is good. Uh, Richard, how are you feeling? Uh, I can only imagine the father of this and watching your son battle this, and you're very open about how challenging this uh, was for you. How are you seven years later, uh, kind of mentally, um, you know, dealing with everything? Well, I, I, I thank you for asking that, Carly, and thank you for having us on your show, by the way. Um, I, you know, it's very cathartic in the sense that, I, I like I said, I, 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 the guilt I have from the screaming up at God when I thought, you know, he was going to take my son, uh, that, uh, you know, cancer was going to take my son. Um, uh, you know, that is a guilt that I still have today and carry today, but we're so blessed that my son's here because he's got a, there is something else that God has for him planned. And I think we know what it is because of what he started his foundation, but, but I, I'm just, I'm blessed. And I'm just trying I'm hoping that this movie can, if if I can leave this movie with one one thing, it's don't give up on God, don't give up on prayer, like I had. They they 
you know, they, he even listens to sinners like me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and uh, you don't know when, why, or how, but he's there and he's got a plan. And, and I can tell you, he, he is at, my son is a walking Testament mm -hmm. that God is around. Him. It's a lot of pressure to um, also uphold that of, you know, constantly saying, look what God did. And, you know, to, to kind of be that one to pick everybody up. How are you doing that? You know, now that you have kind of this platform, how has the pressure been? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's still there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong on that, but uh, it's gotten easier. Um, I'm focusing more on, you know, giving back to, uh, children that are in the same or similar situations that I was in, um, mm -hmm. through my foundation, uh, this, this, uh, creation of the movie, I kind of allowed my story to happen because, um, it, I knew it would give me a sturdier platform to launch my nonprofit. Um, and we're, we're a foundation We're the miracle of Manchester foundation. Um, our website is, uh, we try to make it as simple as possible. So our mm -hmm. website is www dot miracle manchester dot org um and uh, our mission there is really just to, um we give ipads we donate ipads to uh, children fighting cancer and um you know on those ipads children can find those uh you know specific nutritional information and uh on their cancer type and um you know they can they can connect to their community through facetime or or like zoom like we're doing right now and uh as well as some entertainment too because it's an yeah. ipad um and i can tell you firsthand from firsthand experience how boring it can get um while you're waiting in the hospital room for treatments or for scans or whatever it is so they can they can download some books or movies to watch so that is a big part of the the foundation is the ipads and it's a relatively small part you know, in the film and in the movie, how much is, um, you know, when you, when you watch this movie, I mean, everything from, I love that you put the real clips at the end and the, the articles and, and people can kind of see that as well. How true did you guys really try to make sure that it stayed to your, um, story? I loved all your teammates shaving their head and doing all of that. I mean, well, well, that uh, well, Carl, if you don't mind, I'll I'll take that. Yeah, go that ahead. Was actually, a hundred percent accurate. Yeah. Um. So, uh, they called me up and and they said and they said, hey, we've got because Bryce, you know, he's a uh, uh at the time at that time he's now sixteen because he was a month shy of his sixteenth birthday when he was diagnosed and all the 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 two operations happened back to back and stuff. Anyway, so he was going through chemo. He's lost his hair, losing his hair. And um, that day they were having a uh, this guy from San Diego, Paul Rudy is his name, sports thing. They had asked Bryce to come and talk about, you know, his his battle and stuff like that. And his teammates called me and said, I'll never forget Jake Goddard, uh, he, who's one, he's being played in the movie. And uh, Thomas K or TK Berman, they, they called him. They called and said, hey, we've got an idea. We want to do this. We're going to do, and and I got a good story for you on that one. And they said we we we're going to shave our heads. Don't tell Bryce. They said we're bringing uh, clippers on on Thursday. Whoever doesn't shave their head, we've got the clipper. We're holding them down and shaving them. <laughs> the entire team shaved their head, and it was so touching. But uh, no, that was real. Uh, but yeah. but the the movie does embellish a little bit. Um, they, Bryce didn't know. We didn't know, like they said in the movie, oh, you know, your son's got, uh, the, you know, after the CAT scan, your son's got cancer. Well, we didn't know that until they take the biopsy of the tumor. Okay. So they have to embellish a little bit and they, yeah. concise, they concise everything. How, what has God taught you, you think, on this journey of, of why maybe God healed you, Bryce, and maybe hasn't others? I mean, I, I'm sure this is a question you guys maybe get asked a lot or you try to sort through yourself i know it's a big question but what do you think god has taught you about that and and why god maybe allowed this for your family but not for others oh gosh i i ask that question every time all, all the time to god um you know while i was in the stay while i was in the hospital um staying in the hospital i think it'd be easier to count the times when i didn't ask why um yeah, I, I, I think it's just now, you know, um, 
you know, given that time has passed, I think uh, it's time for me to look forward and, uh, and, and that looking forward, it's, it's also, um, I have to, I'm, I've been, you know, I don't know, called or whatever to give back, um, and to kind of spread the story and the power of prayer and not losing faith and everything about that. And, um, you know, creating my foundation that helps give back to kids. And, um, I think that's what, what, I don't know, that God has, has kind of kept me here for. Uh, you know, Richard, what do you think? I mean, how does that kind of sit with you now on, uh, you know, you said how hard of a struggle that was when you were walking through this of why Lord, why are you allowing this to happen? Um, now that you can fast forward and look, I mean, how do you seem to kind of answer that question? Uh, maybe when, when so many other families, I think are still struggling. Uh, that, Carly, that's a great question. I, you know, I look, I have the guilt still. I, you know, from my, as I explained, I was on the stairwell screaming up at God and lost faith and lost, I, you know, uh, I, I, it was really, really a bad time for me. I had to be strong for my son at the same time and breaking down at night when he's asleep and I'm crying because I slept at the hospital every night. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really tough, but I'm hoping that this, you know, that Bryce allowing his story to be told and take some of the guilt off of me a little bit, because like I said, if I can, if I can say prayer does work, God is there, please don't give up on faith. Um, I can't tell you that every outcome is going to be like ours, but I can tell you this because Bryce has lost a lot still. He's still, he, you know, his vision's bad. He doesn't have any, his, 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 um, uh, his balance is horrific. Um, and, and so, you <laughs> know, Bryce is like, thanks dad. <laughs> well, I mean, he'll tell you that, but you're right. That but, my equilibrium was awful. <laughs> so, but, but, uh, and, and coming from a, an elite athlete, that's, a, that's, that's tough for him. He, he, he still struggles with that, but you know, if, if we can get it, if I can get out there that don't give up on God, don't give up on prayer. Mm -hmm. And if it saves one family, one father, one mother, one child, then then we've accomplished what our goal is here. Yeah. I mean, Bryce wants to give back. That's what he's doing with his foundation. Uh, like you said, go to www.miraclemanchester.org. We're not self-funded. We count on the compassion and generosity of, of, of people and family foundations. But if I can, if I can have one person saved from prayer, amen. That's, that's what, that's what it's all about for me. No, oh, I love that. Well, Bryce, what's uh, kind of your last word here um, to really encourage uh, other families who may be working? And, you know, it doesn't even, like I mentioned before, this other family that's just been on my heart a lot. It's not cancer, but there's a lot of families um, struggling. What would your message of hope be, Bryce? Uh, just like the movie, the messages from the movie, um, just the power of prayer, that, that how building that strong community Um you know, not, not losing your faith. Um, all, all those things. I really just hope they take those messages away from the movie and, uh, you know, just keep pushing forward, um, not giving up and, uh, you know, just keep going. And Speaking Carly, of really can... quick, that is probably the, mo one of the most powerful moments in this film. Obviously that's what it's about. The power of prayer. Can you can kind of explain that moment when everybody laid hands on you? The kind of set the scene, um, it was an overcast day in uh, sunny San Diego, which was ironically not sunny um, that day. And so it wasn't chilly, but, it, um, you know, it wasn't hot or anything. And uh, me, uh, I, I just got done with uh, chemotherapy and radiation and everything. And um, I was, I don't know, like 90 pounds or 100 pounds or whatever, very thin. And uh, I was constantly shivering and uh I also had that tough mental attitude to uh, that I always had to wear shorts and I never got cold. And um, so I was wearing shorts that day and I was, uh, you know, shivering, going just just going to uh, my high school. And then um, when I got to my high school, I stopped shivering. And, um, you know, when they began doing that prayer over me, I got this uh, this kind of warm sensation, um, which was very rare for me. And um, I got this warm sensation that I can really only relate it to. Um, uh, you can only really, kind of like when you take clothes out of a dryer, yeah. um, you get that warm feeling and everything. And 
obviously that's external, right? Like when you're putting the clothes on, you feel the warmth and everything. Um, but mine was more internal, like it was kind of radiating with from within me. And um, I got that same warm feeling. And um, yeah, I don't I don't really know how to explain it better than that. Yeah. It was crazy. I would I imagine tell you- was there like a mental kind of peace that came with it as well? I mean, or did you, you know, at that moment in time know that you know, did you just go on your day and just think, okay, nothing else has kind of changed or did you mentally feel any different after? Well, no, I, I I mean, I mentally, I knew from that moment and uh, even when I got diagnosed that I was going to be good to go. Um, And I I knew from that moment I was healed and uh, you know, I could put cancer on the back burners and kind of focus on what's going, what's ahead of me. Yeah. But Carly, we didn't know that day. I didn't know because because we're in the car. He gets in the car and he literally says to his mother and I, he says, Oh dad, mom, I I almost passed out during the prayer. I got so nervous. I started to sweat and I'm, I'm going, I'm trying to be kind of funny about it. Well, son, glad, glad you didn't because you were the star of the party that day. They were all (laughs) eyes on you. So thank goodness. (laughs) And then we found out later that his tumor had shrunk instead of growing. But but I also want to, if you don't mind me saying, you know, we can't thank Pure Flix enough yeah. for putting us on their platform. And it's going to be out on March 31st. Uh, they've got a six month exclusive. So please go there and watch it. But um, we're happy because it's the platform we wanted to be on. It's family and faith and gives people great, wholesome movies to watch. And and hopefully they they enjoy this one. But don't give up on prayer. Don't give don't up. Don't give prayer. up on prayer. I love it. Thank you both for taking time. I know you guys are very busy right now promoting the uh, the movie and everything you have going uh, on. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story with us. And uh, we wish you all the best. Continued prayers as well that this continues to reach the masses and the families and the people who need to hear this message because there are a lot of people. Thank you, Carly. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Oh, such a wonderful story, a wonderful family. And for more information on the Families Foundation, go to MiracleManchester.org. And remember, the movie is streaming now on Pure Flix for six months. Okay, now to the Bible Project. It's one of my personal favorite ways to learn about the full context of the Bible. Their team produces amazing videos that have been viewed millions of times on YouTube. Let's hear more about their goal, mission, and future. Bible. So the book begins with God taking the disorder and the darkness described in the second sentence of the Bible, and God brings out of it order and beauty and goodness. He makes a world where life can flourish. And God makes these creatures called humans, or Adam in Hebrew. He makes Oh, Michael, I'm so excited to get a chance to uh, sit down with you today and hear about the Bible Project. And I told you a little bit uh, before we got started on how I first, you know, started watching the videos. And I've just enjoyed so much watching the Bible Project grow over Mm -hmm. the years. Uh, But I'm still amazed. You have a huge following on uh, YouTube and everywhere, but there's still so many people that don't know about the Bible Project. How do you best explain (laughs) what your team is doing oh gosh well i i mean yeah we it's been eight years and we really we just started off making a couple animated explainer videos about the bible that was the whole you know the heartbeat behind it was which is our mission statement it's just to help people experience the bible as a unified story that leads to jesus that's that was the the goal the heart and our two founders john and tim uh, Tim was, uh, they'd gone to seminary together, uh, mm-hmm. way back when in, 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 a Bible college here and, uh, split ways after that, Tim went like full Bible nerd route and went and got his master's and then his doctorate and moved over to Israel and learned Hebrew and just kind of did they came back as a professor at a Hebrew school here in the States, Wisconsin. And John went the business route. He went, um, you know, realized that he had a knack for helping people take complex ideas and finding a simplified way to explain it. And so he started doing that with explainer videos for tech companies like Google and Apple and and others. And uh, the two of them had this idea about what if we took Tim's like Bible brain and John's incredible ability to make complex things, you know, uh, in a way that we can all understand and put that together and do that for the Bible. And it was really just a passion project for them in the beginning. They both had other jobs full time. And John had a studio that he was doing that. And Tim was a pastor. And 
uh, and they made a couple videos and got some friends to, to fund the first few. We put them up on YouTube. The idea was always to make them for free and just help people. And, uh, and it just took off and the crowd, you know, we kind of put at the end of the video, like, Hey, if you want to see more of these throw like five bucks in the hat and when we have enough, we'll make another video. And it's just that flywheel, um, spun up real fast with people clearly finding, uh, good in the videos and it was helping them in some way, shape or form. And so thus began the project. And here we are 180 plus videos later and, you know, a podcast and we have a free online seminary called classroom that, that people can do stuff on and an app. And, and what do we make of this idea? Because again, it's kind of like what the chosen is doing right now that, right. That's like mm. one of the biggest hit mm. shows that's helping, I think, draw people uh, and get them excited about uh, the Bible, bringing it to life. And God doesn't need that, right? Like he's never needed anybody to interpret it in a particular way. But there is something special going on right now with technology and with what we're able to do now as uh, the gifts that we have as humans and kind of our specialties and using our crafts. I mean, what do yeah. you say to that? Listen, I, I do think that in order to really understand the scriptures, obviously we need the spirit. We need, we need you know, God is the one that's going to, you know, help us reveal those things. But you know, you have to understand context too. And I think that's one of the biggest hearts for us is, you know, uh, you know, even for me and John and, and, you know, I would be the one that I was a pastor for a long time. And at one point I got to the point where I was just reading the Bible and I had to teach a message. Like that was it. It was that, just honest confession. I wasn't in it for myself. It was very much like if I got to open it up and study something and teach something, I'll, I'll go there. Um, I also just, the Old Testament was just really confusing to me with there's a bunch of weird stuff in there and it wasn't that easy to understand. And I did need other, you know, but I had, you know, Bible Project helped me understand and Tim that I can't understand the new heavens and the new earth that's talked about in Revelation if I don't understand the garden from Genesis. And it's, and you've got to understand the entire context and narrative. It's hard to understand Jesus without understanding the, 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 this rescue mission that God was on throughout all of humanity uh, that we that we see. And so, you know, I, I do think, yeah, all we need, you know, if you should be able to open it up and, and learn from it for sure. But I do think there's something about understanding how to approach, because it's not just one book. This is like many books written by many different people uh, in different times and different cultures and different places. The New Testament has a bit of a Greek bent because that was the world that was, you know, operating in that. So it's a little easier sometimes even for us Westerners to understand the New Testament just because that's the context that it was written in. The, the Torah and the Psalms is a Hebraic, you know, much more uh, Eastern uh, narrative approach to, to how they, they wrote. And so you, if you don't understand that stuff, it's, it's a little difficult sometimes to just dive in. And so we're just trying to make it easier for people to go, oh, that was poetry. That's why it's so kind of crazy. Oh, that was, you know, narrative. That's why it's a story. And I'm supposed to take something out of the story. Oh, that's like a genealogy. That's just straight facts that they're trying to like, you know, do, like, it's just different. So we don't read a newspaper every single page the same. We read the comics different than we read the obituaries, than we read the front. I mean, I just think we 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 know how to do this, but we haven't done that often with the Bible. Well, in we our generation it. right now, we are such a fast, you know, we want something that gives us context right now. We can pick a verse and just do, you know, let me let it just that apply to what I'm going through right now. And totally. that's what I'm learning in my own life, you know, is like, you can't, you need context. We don't have often sometimes the attention span and all the other yeah. things that kind of grab our attention, you know, in our hope, and at least what I found, and I don't know if you found this, but I know that when I watch one of our videos or listen to Tara Lee or, or mm -hmm. whoever, um, that it gets me excited about going back and reading mm -hmm. the Bible, not mm -hmm. the opposite. You know, we're not trying to, to make videos to go, you don't have to read the Bible, just watch this overview video. It's more like watch this overview video, see the mastery that is in this incredible book, and then you're going to just be so excited about going in and reading it for yourself. And so I've caught myself in the last, you know, eight years since Bible Projects come on the scene, definitely reading more because of the videos. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. So that's that's the hope is that we, you know, can help people slow down and, and learn and read it for themselves.
So where is the future of the Bible Project now? You mentioned a podcast, so that I know that's uh, you know more recent. That wasn't in the very beginning. Talk about some other things yeah. where the vision maybe is that we that we can take this. Yeah, I mean we we want to help create continuing creating resources that are going to help people experience the Bible as unified or at least to Jesus. That may not just be video. So we do have a podcast and we have a blog and we have all that kind of stuff. We have our own app that we put out last year. Um, that's a beautiful app that helps people journey through the scriptures and, you know, kind of just piece by piece and hyperlinks those videos and concepts and content and the paradigm that we approach uh, the Bible um, in. And so the app really helps you do that. Uh, we have something called Classroom that is a free, basically online seminary uh, for people that if they really want to go deep into like, you know, 16 hour type classes on, you know, the Torah or Jonah or Matthew or whatever, um, we're filming classes and we fly in students from around the world, six students, and we actually film it here in Portland. And Tim, you know, basically teaches through for three days what he would teach at like a seminary. But here we record it. And we edit the whole thing and then we put it up online for anybody to go through. So we've got folks in, you know, uh, Uganda right now that are pastors at a church that are going through classes and people in Germany and people, you know, in uh, Latin America and all over the place. And so that's kind of been a really fun, you know, if, if you're excited about learning more and more about the scriptures, classroom is a great, great place to go. Um, you know, we... Yeah, we've got we've got a VR project that we're working on right now as well. Um, virtual you know, reality, sort of like virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I like yeah, it. I mean, that space is there. It's going to happen, yeah. whether you know people like it or not. And so, I think it's one of those ones where we just want to figure out how to be in that space and and help people again, like learn about yeah. learn about the Bible in that space. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I know how busy you are. What is the best place? Mm. Is it the website, YouTube? If someone wants to know more about everything that's going on, where do you first send them? I would hit, hit, hit the website just because it's going to have everything there. You've got the videos, you've got the podcast, you've got classroom, you've got our app download, you know, you can download our app. Our app's a great way. All of our stuff is in there as well. And so if you're just get into an app store and it's yeah. free. So just hit Bible project, but yeah, bibleproject.com. Well, tell the team a uh, job well done. Keep it up. Keep oh, encouraging Carly, them because this you. message and this type of content is so helpful and so needed across the world. And uh, it's pretty cool to watch to see how this continues to grow. So I look forward, hopefully to talking again, maybe in the future about other Anytime. projects coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Well, so appreciate it, Carly. Thank you so much for all you're doing. <laughs> and we so appreciate you. We hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I'm your host, Carly Boyette, and I so look forward to seeing you again next week. Mm -hmm.